so in this video uh, we will discuss the concept of involution principle okay so before going to this actually uh, concept of involution principle we need some uh, term and terminology for the concept of this uh, involution principle so here the you uh, we we have this type of concept s is equal to s positive union s negative is a partition of a finite set okay partition is just remember so therefore the intersection of s positive and s negative this is equal to five partition of a finite set into two parts we need this type of set finite set of course and the this is first part is said to be positive part and second part is said to be negative part okay then this set is said to be sign set actually as is said to be sign set if we have two this type of two parts actually okay two parts are there such that mm, uh, this is the s positive and s this is these are the actually part i set of s then s is said to be uh, sign set okay then uh, we have uh, involution the concept of involution is also needed here okay so if phi from s to s uh, is an involution such that uh, involution means uh, phi square equal to i okay phi square equal to i identity mapping uh, phi square is equal to i this is the definition of involution so it is an involution such that x and phi x are in different parts of s whenever phi of x is not equal to x that is if phi of x is not equal to x then x and phi x uh, are in uh, x and phi x they are in different parts in different parts in s that is if x belongs to s positive then phi x belongs to s negative something like that or x belongs to s negative then phi x belongs to s positive if phi x is not equal to x okay that is if phi x is equal to x then phi x equal to x then uh, then we have to phi x and x belongs to the same same part this is actually obvious this is nothing but we, we this is the definition actually phi x is not equal to x means phi x and x they define they they, they are not equal since therefore they belongs to some defined set actually okay that belongs to defined set this is the actually uh, definition of this uh, involution and this involution is said to be an alternating or sign reversing involution okay sign reversing involution so automatically then if i going to count the element of s positive minus this is count the element of s negative so s with, with respect to this involution then you can see s positive that is s positive if i consider element of s positive x belongs to s positive then automatically phi of x equal to x okay phi of x equal to x by definition okay by the definition phi of x belongs to x so that is how many fixed points are there in terms of phi this set is counted how many fixed points are there because f phi, um, f phi of x equal to x means this is x is a fixed point okay x is a fixed point so this is the definition of fixed point okay so uh, so how many fixed points are there in terms of this involution how many fixed points are there in s positive that is in how many fixed points are there in s negative similarly for s negative okay so if uh, fixed point of s negative equal to phi okay if all that is all of s negative grade over into s positive by phi okay s all of s s s negative is grade over into s positive by phi then this difference uh, this difference this is equal to actually uh, number of element in uh, fix s positive okay that is how many um, fixed points are there in s positive because this this uh, fix of s negative equal to phi that is there is no fixed point in s negative so this part is equal to zero then do we have this actually this defines equal to this defines equal to actually number of element in s positive okay so this is the concept we are going to need uh, we need this concept mm, are, so here this is actually we need the definition of alternating alternating or sign reversing involution okay sign reversing involution for this we need a concept of partition set partition of a set finite set in two parts s positive and s negative this these are actually denote there's a notation for a for a for a, for a set in terms of two sets okay and uh, this is actually a involution that is phi of phi square of phi square equal to identity such that what is the definition of what is involution whenever phi of x is not equal to x then x and phi x mm, are in different parts that is if x belongs to s positive phi x belongs to s negative and if x belongs to s negative phi x belongs to s positive something like that okay and we have this idea reading this and reading this uh, alternating involution now 
what is the involution principle this is, it actually generalizes the concept of it generalizes the concept of this uh, principle of bijection okay in principle of bijection you just remember if we have a set a okay uh, if we have a set say b we don't not know the cardinality of the set uh, set b and uh, if we can have a bijection from a to b such that we know the cardinality of the set a then automatically cardinality of the set b this will be equal to m something like that okay this is the cardinality m is the cardinality of the set capital a so it actually uh, this principle of involution generalize this concept okay this concept is analyzed in the principle of uh, involution so uh, to enumerate a set actually uh, what we are going to do here embed x into a sign set something like that okay embed means there exists a monomorphism for x into s there exists a monomorphism from x into s so in uh, that is uh, and if there exists a monomorphism from x into s then x can be considered as a subset of s okay okay so embed x into a sign set uh, with this condition the x is also contained in s positive x is already contained in s but x is we need the another condition uh, such that x is contained in s positive okay so x contained in s positive means automatically x is also contained in s because this is the actually union of s positive and s negative then we are going to find out an um, alternating involution um, phi okay from s to uh, from uh, s to s such that uh, fixed point of s negative equal to phi and fixed point of s positive equal to x so what does it imply it implies that this will give the required result actually see fixed point of therefore number of element in x is equal to okay fixed point of s positive okay fixed point of s positive okay uh, this is equal to x positive but fixed point of x uh, but fixed point of s negative equal to zero therefore x can be written as number of element in s positive minus number of element is um, fixed point of s negative number of element of um, uh, fixed point of s, s positive and number of element of minus uh, number of element fixed point of s negative so this is nothing but actually by the definition of involution this is actually s positive number of element s positive minus number of element s negative so therefore the uh, the number of element in x is nothing but this okay so that is the idea first you have to consider uh, if, if, a, if we are going to count the set uh, if we are going to enumerate the set that is number how many elements are there of course we are dealing with the finite set so yeah, how many elements are there so embed x into a, um, into a sign set such that x is a uh, subset of s positive and uh, you have to find out an alternating involution okay from s to s positive such that this condition is satisfied fix of s negative is equal to phi and fix of x positive is equal to x then what does it imply number of elements is x x is nothing but um this is number of element is s positive minus number of element is s negative so now you consider an example okay so this is the example to relate it with the curtain numbers actually uh, already we we have this type of example in our class so this is another method to find out the curtain numbers so how many lattice paths from 0 0 to n n are there okay with 1 0 and 0 1 step these are actually known step that is right, right step and upward step uh, steps that never go beyond the beyond the diagonal okay that never go beyond the diagonal okay how many lattice paths are there okay that never go beyond the diagonal you just remember the lattice path okay this is that is the concept of lattice path so if it, this is say m this is say nn this is say nn so uh, how many lattice paths are there from beyond the diagonal okay this this type of part is not possible actually so all paths something like that uh, okay beyond that it is not possible we are not interested in this type of part okay we have this beyond the diagonal so uh, th this is the number say a and b, a and b is the number of that lattice let that, that number of part from 0 0 to n n so this is n n actually you correct it in your image so a and b the number of lattice paths uh, from 0 0 to n n so uh, for for convenience of discussion you just consider these are these are the images i have given so a1 so this is uh, we, if i consider a1 that is 0 0 to 1 on how many lattice paths are there uh, which never go beyond the diagonal that is this so we have only one part right up 
Similarly, for um, 0, 0 to 2, 2, 2, we have only two parts hmm? right, right, up, up. And similarly, and one is right, up, right, up. Okay, and you can observe in case of um, A3, that is 0, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0 to 3, 3. So, this is one part, this is another. We have this part, and this is you can observe. No, this is something like that. Okay, so these are actually five parts. So these are actually the Catalan numbers. So we already give this example in the class. So okay. So now we are going to count this in the concept of the principle principle of involution. So what is our objective? Our objective is to actually um, find out a uh, alternating. Uh, we have to find out s positive and then s negative first. Okay. Then take the union. Then we have to find out the corresponding. Uh, yeah, involution that is the alternating involution so what is the set s positive here s positive is the number of all lattice part from 1 0 to n plus 1 n n plus 1 n and s negative is the uh, all paths from 0 1 to n plus 1 n okay 0 1 to all lattice paths s positive so s positive so how many uh, s positive users observe the definition of lattice part so how many lattice paths are there from 0 0 to mn so this is nothing but we we have this m step m right step and n upward step so and this is nothing but m plus n choose m or n okay this is the number of lattice path from 0 0 to mn so here uh, we have considered number of lattice path from 1 0 to n plus 1 up to n s positive so that is uh, so how many steps are there in in the first code that we have n n step okay in our previous case 0 0 to n n 0 0 to m n so here 1 to n plus 1 so that is from uh, right right step right steps are actually n step and similarly up steps are nothing but n step so that is from twice n okay n plus n that is twice n twice n choose n okay 0 to n Okay, zero to n. Twice as soon this is the number of element in S positive. Okay, this is the number because uh, S positive is the set of all lattice part from one zero to n plus one n, and S negative will all lattice part from zero one to n plus one. So this is actually um, they are in second coordinate. There are actually how many step? N minus one step. So n plus one plus n minus one. So ultimately we have to traverse n step. Okay, this is again also twice n step. So this is twice n n plus one plus n minus one. So twice n step. So to ascend, choose actually n plus one, okay, zero to n plus one, zero to n plus one. So these are the actually number of elements is s positive and s negative, okay. So you can observe a a n a n is actually a subset of obviously a n zero zero to n n a n is a subset of okay a n is a subset of uh, uh, a n is a subset of this s s positive because s positive these are actually uh, this is nothing but one zero two though it is written number of all lattice part one zero two n plus one n so here actually n steps here to here n steps and uh, putting automatically n step so here to here n step and here to here n step so this is a an is a particular case of actually s positive so an is a subset of s positive our first condition is satisfied okay now uh, we are going to find out the uh, in uh, uh, involution, which an alternating involution from this this set uh, from this set S to S. Okay, so what is the actually alternating involution? So you define the involution in this way. Uh, define the involution in this way. Pi of W is the part in which the part from one zero or zero one until the first arrival at the diagonal is reflected okay okay so that is if uh, so from 1 0 to uh, 1 0 okay the if if i consider s positive so this is from 1 0 to 1 0 to actually uh, some 1 0 to n plus 1 n plus 1 to n n plus 1 to n so this is this is a part in cs positive so this is a path so here it hits the diagonal at this point so now according to the definition of phi uses reflect this part so this part will be actually this part and this part will be actually this part so this is a part in this is a part in s positive and this is a part in actually s negative okay so this is the definition of phi and if if the w if the path does not actually hit if the path does not hit the diagonal okay 
then uh, phi w is equal to w okay okay so this is the actual definition okay definition is something like that okay if it hits the diagonal then you have to do this part okay you have to reflect reflect this part here also it, it hits here so if i consider the image of this then this will be this part so here image of w is equal to this okay and if i consider this part w as this then image of w will be this okay so this is for actually first part if phi w is equal to w uh, if w never hits then it's a diagonal okay then we consider phi w is equal to w so this is the definition of actually the um, definition of function phi this is the mapping phi then automatically this mapping phi is an involution and it is also an alternating involution why it is an involution so this is an involution this is actually very easy to observe if p never hits the diagonal then automatically uh, phi of w is equal to w w never hits the diagonal then phi square w is equal to automatically this okay phi square w is equal to this so this is sexual identity phi square is equal to identity similarly if w hits the diagonal then what does it imply phi of w w hits the diagonal then phi of w is equal to this again phi of phi of w this will be this okay that is we have this identity so automatically w uh, automatically phi square is equal to identity okay so therefore it is an involution and this is also an alternating involution why it is an alternating involution by definition if alternating involution means if phi w is not equal to w we have to show that phi w and w okay phi w and w they are in actually defined set obviously by the definition it is obvious uh, so w is this this is our w phi w is this so this is this is a member in s positive this is a member in s negative similarly if i consider this is a mem w is this then phi w will be this okay so that is phi w and w they are in defined parts okay that is if phi w belongs to s positive and w belongs to s negative or phi w belongs to s negative and w belongs to s positive okay so this will actually and therefore this is actually uh, therefore this is an alternating alternating involution and you, you can uh, also observe that the paths in w pass in s okay uh, any part in s negative uh, cross the diagonal any pass in s, ne s negative cross the diagonal so what is part in s negative this is a, this is a part from 0 1 to n plus 1 to n so this is our nn so automatically if i if i if i use a lattice from from 0 1 to n plus 1 to n automatically this lattice part always hits this diagonal okay because we have to reach this point okay it's this point okay so you can go here if i go this and this and this automatically it will hit actually so if i consider the extreme case if i consider this to this okay to reach this point you have to hit the diagonal okay something like that so this is the extreme case okay so automatically that is any part in s negative always hits the diagonal so always hits the diagonal means what always hits the diagonal so what does it imply it implies that there is no actual fixed point okay all right fixed point means what ah, fixed point is phi w is equal to w if w never hits the diagonal but in any any member in w that is any part hits the hits the diagonal therefore uh, there is no actually fixed points this is the definition of fixed point phi w is equal to w that is w is a fixed point if w is never hits the diagonal since w de always hits the diagonal in case of s negative therefore there is no fixed point in s negative so fixed point of s negative equal to phi okay okay uh, since the path in s s uh, path in fixed s positive correspond precisely to the um, catalan part by moving them one step one step to the left and we obtain so this is already we, I, I told you so we obtain so a n this is equal to a n so this is nothing but a n uh, number of element uh, fix of s positive okay fix of x positive a n okay fix of s positive so this is actually number of element is s positive minus number of element s negative s negative okay uh, from this okay because fix of s negative equal to phi okay so therefore fix of x positive this is nothing but actually this is uh, minus fix of num number of element fix of s positive minus number of element fix of s negative but fix of x negative in means that is number of element s positive and number of element s negative but number of element s positive is equal to this number of element s negative equal to this so this is actually one by n plus one this i have the little bit calculation 
So therefore, this is nothing but actually the Catalan number. Okay, and this is equal to Catalan number, the Catalan number. Okay, so this is the required reason. Okay. Um, then uh, there is another observation. This is very simple actually. The Catalan paths, okay, Catalan path, this type of path, uh, path from zero zero to uh, can be represented as zero zero to twice into zero. With the step one one or down diagonal diagonal step up one one and down one minus one that never falls below the x-axis. Okay, so one one this is one minus one. Okay. 1, 1, 1 minus. So for C3, how many Catalan paths are there? There are 5 paths actually. So first you consider 1, 1, this, something like that. We are going to use that, that, that steps only. Diagonal step up 1, 1 and down 1 minus 1. Okay. This is 1, 1. This is 1 minus 1. This is again 1, 1. This is 1, 1. This is 1 minus 1. Okay. Then this is again 1 minus 1. Okay. So 0, 0, 2. This is nothing but just... Um, Okay, so zero zero to twice and zero. Okay, this is actually one two three four five six three. N is equal to three six. Okay, here zero zero to one. So these are the actually paths. Five paths are there. We can discuss this Catalan path in this way also. Okay, so thank you.